Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully Steve, you'll rejoin us here in a minute. Can you so, still hear me? We can still hear you, but we can't see you. Do you mind turning your camera back on? I'm trying. I'm stuck. <laughs> there should be a little camera in your lower left corner. Can you see me? Like down, uh, down here, <laughs> down there. Yeah. Oh, there should be okay. a little camera. There it is. Hey. There you are. So um, I'm on my I'm on the bridge of my boat. <laughs> nice, nice. I, I, is that I, Mr. I, Microphone? I, I, hey, girls. Hey, girls. We'll be back to pick you up in a minute. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, Scott, I like your headset. And Steve, I like your uh, microphone. I the headset that this guy's wearing is the older version of this uh, Plantronic set. Uh, um headset and it the battery dies faster but the range was better like i could go out in my garage and smoke um and still be on the phone with people and this this one this more fancier one the battery life's forever but if i go to the kitchen at the top of the stairs it disconnects from the computer so i've kind of been shackled so stevie do you do do you do like a video broadcast from there with the date i see you got the date there Mm -hmm. and uh it's I'm starting like a, to. I'm starting to. I don't. I, I mean, welcome like back, uh, Russian I was, Studio. I was just. Uh, I was just telling Billy that I'm gonna. Um, I'm gonna record. Do this with people. I'm gonna call people and talk to them about what's going on, how the last week has been, how different their life is, what kind of optimism do they have, and are they preparing for this to be over? Yeah. <laughs> that kind of shit. So Stevie, um, you haven't been working at all, have you? Just here. See, I got a keyboard here. Right on. Oh, yeah. Right on. I uh, I did load up um, <clears throat> Death Warmed Over onto the uh, onto the iTunes here, and it, and it or the GarageBand, rather. And it came in nice. It's a nice track, and I can add tracks to it. And uh, I saw an exchange with you and Billy where you were saying, <clears throat> if I record anything, just start at the beginning and send you just that track. Can you hear that? can hear that are you going to do a kitchen concert for us a tiny uh, what, what do they call those npr things tiny, tiny counter desk. Tiny, tiny desk <laughs> tiny desk right the tiny desk the tiny counter the tiny desk whatever so um uh when you say working around the farm are you are you and your dad thinking about um i know you told me you had done some plantings in recent years are you guys thinking about christmas season already uh we've been cutting down the old trees because yeah. there's a lot of uh, old, old trees that need, are dead and need to go. Right. So we're clearing the fields. Did you guys uh, Did you guys doomsday prep over the last couple of weeks? Did you guys stock up on stuff, or are you still just treating it as day-to-day anyway? Yeah, we have all the toilet paper. That's, <laughs> <one>. <laughs> That's why no one in the northern Kentucky, Ohio Valley area can get toilet paper, because Don Gurton has it all in a silo on his farm. Exactly. <laughs> right on. <laughs> right on. Now, Billy, you said something a second ago about something you were doing for Salesforce where they had uh, prioritized or were trying to expedite some kind of uh, remote meeting capability. Is that what you'd said? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, just uh, wanting to kind of take some, some of their in-person uh, orientation stuff into the digital world to be able to share a link rather than requiring someone to, uh, you know, visit a site for, for the weekend or whatever. Right. And God forbid, touch somebody. Yeah. <laughs> CentOS. I was doing stuff with CentOS too. Oh yeah. And, uh, like, uh, you may have heard about the coronavirus, our products, uh, help <laughs> you wash your hands. That's, right. That's, that's We've been antibacterial rated. For a hundred million years, Cintas. So, um, Billy, had you have you been um, have you been freelancing long enough to to actually really notice if there's been a downturn or an uptick in in job assignments? Or uh, I mean, has it been kind of sporadic anyway? Uh, <clears throat> yeah the uh, the creatives group that I that I work through. Um, has uh, kind of indicated that they're, you know, they've been pretty slammed. Slammed? Well, with uh, all of a sudden people needing work done remote and oh, know, yeah. transitioning an office person to work remote takes time, whereas right. someone like myself is already set up and knows how to communicate with 
Zoom and things like that and can right. just get right into it. Um, now we're only two weeks into this affecting us. So who knows what, you know, the next uh, couple of weeks will, will be like, but. Um, right. Stevie, are you having any conversations with like McCabe or Shadler or anything about what they expect and, and how, how this is affecting them? I mean, I don't know what that was. <laughs> I don't no, I haven't talked to them, and uh, it, it doesn't look good. It's not uh, I mean, good, it, do, it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your feelings are about how serious the threat of the virus itself is. I mean, the, the economic impact is. I mean, that's the thing. Though, is one of the reasons I wanted to start talking to people about this is I've talked to, um, like my friend Bart. He's a roofer, and he says business as usual. Nothing's okay. changed. In fact, in fact, he's have he's got more business coming in, and and uh. You know, but then I was, you know, talking about the real estate thing and how, I mean, there's entire real estate markets out there that are just dead in the water. <laughs> like nobody's well, doing anything. Well, you know, aside from the corporate copywriting stuff that I do, you know, the stuff right. that, that, you know, you see me sort of bragging about doing on Facebook, you know, I'm, I'm not always, sort of. hey, look at this, hey, look at this <laughs> corporate thing I'm working on. Sort of like, bragging. Uh, um, you know, like uh, City Beat, you know, Mike uh, Breen shot me the note like hey i don't know if you if you heard i gotta take stock of what features you have on the way and you know and he's he's you know now okay so that's kind of what i'm talking about so he was saying he's got to take stock on what you have like on the stake well, and, 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 and determine and then, whether or not you pursue him or not or well that that was immediate oh, okay that was immediate uh but but then since then of course you know they've had their staff reduction quite a bit uh, I had City Beat has reduced way. staff. Oh yeah, yeah they have. Okay, see this, yeah. these are the kinds of things I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know anything about. What yeah, about I don't, think out of, I don't think I'm speaking out of turn because they they put out a notice. About yeah. That. Um, the Chicago paper that I do writing for, I had features right. ready to print and uh, hold on. Yeah, they've they've had to say, well, the show's canceled now, but we're interested in doing articles about bands that are doing virtual performances. Sure, sure. Uh, to change the focus a little bit. Yeah, and Stevie, you asked a good question. What about Herzog? What's Tell, going give on us, Herzog? Yeah, give us an update on, on, so the way I understand it, somebody broke the window of Herzog, gathered up a bunch of stuff, went running down the street, was caught shortly thereafter with a bunch of stuff in their hands, right? Yeah, they, that... they, they, pried, the, they pried the front uh, doors open. Uh, <laughs> yeah, shattered the, the secondary door, um, grabbed two guitars that total value about three hundred dollars for oh for both yeah for both and, and a little fifty dollar practice amp what was the description of the guitars running down the street what kind were they two dan electros, dan electros. running down yeah. the street yeah well and that was that was incorrect <laughs> they, they weren't dan electros but uh anyway anyway you know they were recovered right away and the guy was caught yeah well, somebody, um, I don't know if it was you or if it was Elliot, but it was somebody that I'm on Facebook with um, had remarked that they hoped that this wouldn't be taken as a um, indicator of a sudden upsurge in property crime due to the oh, coronavirus. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, I mean, that's on everybody's minds. And I asked, uh, the cops, it is. I asked the cops at the scene and they were like, you know, we've not seen an uptick in this stuff. Sure. So. Which is no, oh, maybe it was you then. Maybe it was the quote from the officer that you posted. But um, yeah, and that's see, that's the kind of thing that you know. I uh, my boss uh, has gone back and forth between you know telling us all to be very positive and make sure agents understand that you can always build future business, which is fair. Um, but he's also telling us things like Amazon sells six packs of pepper spray. <laughs> so you know, maybe right ready for are you ready for anything, right? I I don't know. Are, I don't Scott, know. are you in your basement? I am. Oh. Rebel Yell. No. Sierra Nevada. Um, I am. This is this is where I work all the time. Uh, the better view is the other side when I have because behind this computer there's four other monitors. There's a, a two ma two monitor Mac over here, and then I have two monitors backing up my little PC laptop for work. Um, and then yeah. I got my you know I got my keyboard and my camera set up, and I've got my base right behind me with the little. Uh, mark base amp <laughs> and i've got my date placard as someone remarked before because yeah, that is that is in fact today's date i do change it every day <laughs> it lights up 
Oh. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. I don't think you can read it on video when it's lit up. Yeah, you can't even read it. So it's, it's use is limited. <laughs> What it is? I got my uh, Rockets to Mars Southgate House final show poster there. I was trying to read that. I was trying to see if that said Southgate House and uh, what was at the top. Yeah. Yeah, this is the the Rockets to Mars farewell show. Okay. So, with Jay Hopper's was, borderline yeah. misogyny art. What year was that? Uh, I have no fucking idea. Um, two thousand. Two thousand four. Was it four? I was going to say five. Know. Yeah. <laughs> 2005, six, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't say. Would have been. Um, I know it was after five. I know it was uh, a couple years after five was born. He was born in 2003. Um, it was after I was married, too. So that would have made it like, it's probably 2006 or seven, actually. What year were you married? Three, two? Five, 2005. Wait, you just said five was born in 03? Uh huh. That's correct. You're married in five? Correct, correct. Oh, Are you boy. just now putting this together? We lived oh, in boy. sin. I just Wait, spat on my computer. We lived in sin. Yeah. Five was, don't you remember? Five was our ring bearer. No, you don't remember? <laughs> Did you, you came to my wedding, didn't you? Weren't you there? No, I wasn't. You didn't come to my wedding? No, I was on a bender. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I don't know what's worse, the fact that uh, that was the circumstance or that I have no recollection whatsoever. I would have sworn you were there. I was Just, there in spirit. Uh, yes, you were, without a doubt. You were definitely there in spirit. Billy wasn't there either. He didn't live here in 2005. I would have been, I would have been in Dayton, Ohio. You could have come to the wedding then. It would have been a short trip. Billy, I could have, didn't yeah. you live in Chicago? I was in Chicago from 2000 till 2003. Was David N. right there then? Uh, he and I moved up there together, actually. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, we were we were roommates, and then he uh, wanted to come back uh, to Cincinnati before too long. I want to go home. <laughs> was, yeah. Remember when we were talking about going to record with Colte, and where is he, Detroit? Yeah, yeah, Colte wants to uh, record Cistern. Well, just uh, just kind of in keeping, I, you know, and I want to do that. I mean, so, at, at least some of our new songs, I think, are almost ready to be recorded, but... um. Um, and Stevie, like I said, I, I, I've got a guitar track that's kind of a suggested uh, vocal melody. I'm not going to sing something on there, but um, hey, but anyway. Have you, uh, have you heard of this studio in Columbus called Musical, Music, Musical, Musical Studio? Nope, nope. It's been there for 50 years. Don't know, don't vouch. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, anyway, one of the engineers there, he just opened up his own studio called uh, Secret Studio, and his name's Keith Hanlon, and he was- In drummer. Columbus? Yes, he was the drummer in Wolf Ticket. Oh, oh, so we have an oblique uh, connection. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that band. Wolf Ticket? No? no I don't. Stevie, yeah. give him the history of Wolf Ticket. <laughs> Wolf Ticket was my band when I was in Athens, Ohio. <laughs> Right. Oh, you might have told me about this then. Wolf Ticket was also a very early Cistern song, one of the first I learned to play with Stevie and Joel. Yeah, and our biggest claim to fame was we got to open for the church. Yeah. Oh, I have heard this story, yeah. And instead of playing uh, uh, Under the Milky Way, they played Tantalized. <laughs> they played Under the Milky Way. I'm kidding, of course gig. they did. <laughs> it was a Milky Way tour. We got the gig. Oh, was it? Yeah. We won a battle of the bands. And one or the other, the, the competing band in the battle uh, was the the lead singer was in a cover band that I was in the year before, Wolf Ticket. And uh, they played uh, covers with a few of their own, but they wanted an original band to open up and play with the church. So we got it, but the other band claimed that the uh, contest was rigged, and R that, uh, so that you guys could play the show. Yeah, <laughs> and they made a big deal. And what was year was that? I would have thought Milky Way would have been earlier than that. I was, was assuming 80, Tantalize. This was eighty-eight. Wasn't wasn't Milky Way like eighty-three or four? No, I think eighty-eight would be the Tantalized record. 
But I don't know. You know I don't know. Milky Way was 87, 88. Okay. I believe you. Anyway. I uh, like the sunset that's happening behind you. It's one of the only reasons I'm still recording is your sunset. Anyway, <laughs> so then uh, Steve Kilby did some gigs with Greg, and I was there. And uh, Greg was going to go on to do some uh, – recordings with uh, Kilby and they were they played a show in LA but uh, Kilby wasn't showing up for some of the rehearsals and when he did show up he didn't know any of the songs that <laughs> of the Wigs repertoire that they were going to do All right. Greg, Greg was a little concerned about that and Kilby's response was when I get on that stage I will rise to the occasion <laughs> was it delivered with that kind of dramatic aplomb yeah, he was really high. <laughs> he, you know, he was, during the rehearsals, he was out scoring blow, I think. Sure. I mean, well, you got to get through somehow, right? So so what do you guys think, uh, uh, Stevie? What, what, what do you think? How, how long is this going to go on? How long can this go on? Uh, for 18 months. Yeah, you, okay, you're in it for the long haul. You guys have enough toilet paper I mean, for that. That's that's the virus. You know, well, I mean, a life of the virus. I mean, it's but I, what I mean is, you, you know what I mean. I, I mean, I mean, this stuff. kind of yeah. Eventually, this everybody's going to get tired of being locked up, and people are life is going to go on. And and do you, but see, that's that's I guess that's my question. So you foresee it being a circumstance where, just kind of as a collective consciousness thing we all just decide to say fuck it and hit hit the road and it's not a problem it's just gonna slowly evolve come back back to that well what do you think of the thought process that there's certain aspects of this that are gonna stick forever well you just kind of have to <laughs> maybe washing our hands might not be what? a bad thing washing your hands <laughs> or you're talking economic ramifications uh, i mean i i i don't think the economic ramifications can even be uh, reasonably predicted i i mean there's some that are uh completely unavoidable at this point but um like the, i mean obviously the recession circumstance but you well, know the, I, ones, the ones that survive will have to worry about that i suppose <laughs> But that's somebody, somebody told me that they found that people were evenly split. Half the people thought it would be everything back to normal in a couple of weeks. And the other, every, everybody else thought it was Mad Max. Like you better buy a leather harness and a sawed off shotgun and be ready for the, for the well, post-apocalyptic landscape. There's those kids on the South Florida beaches. I'm going to party. Fuck Corona. <laughs> well, then, of course those were local kids. And it turns <laughs> out one of them got the virus. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. One of them, the one, the one kid that they were uh, showing the most on TV, certainly seemed to have some kind of skin condition. Billy, yeah. what do you, th well, Billy, what do you think? What, what's your, what's your gut feeling on on broader impacts and time frame? Uh, well, you know, I mean, this is going to be, you know, the the thing that defines a generation. Uh, it's it's you know, it's going to be like you know, our grandparents would talk about the depression and and what they had to do to get by, and it's going to be one of those things. I mean, my, uh, I don't think things are ever going to be the same. Well, my grandfather uh, talked about the 1918 uh, flu. Spanish flu epidemic. Yeah. He was sick for six months, but he <laughs> survived, obviously. Yeah. Right. Love and we you. thank him. We wouldn't have you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Well, that's the thing. I mean, uh, there's there's been you know, allusions to other, I mean, the, the 2008 real estate crash, 9-11, obviously, you know, um, I, that, I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, that's the thing is, is I don't know. I can't decide now the, the impact, the impact of this one, at least for me personally, and for most of the people I'm talking to is uh, specific and broad reaching enough that uh, I think that's true. I think it'll be something we talk about forever, no matter how it shakes out. I mean, even if, even if three months from now, you know, the numbers don't go up and, you know, apparently it was not as it's too bad <laughs> huge we to deal as it was. It's too bad we weren't more prepared. Like, <laughs> uh, you know, we didn't have a huge Ebola outbreak in the U.S. or those other African plagues that were happening, you know, in the last 10 years. Well, you know what? That's the you know that's a good point though. I, I think that's I think that's one of the reasons that the the clampdown and the um and I don't want to call it hysteria because I don't think there's anything wrong with 
you know, trying to flatten the curve as everyone keeps saying. But um, I think a lot of people at the beginning of the year when, you know, the news on the Chinese circumstance and the fact that there've been cases in other parts of the world, I think a lot of people dismissed it like Ebola and things like that. That's a, that's a distant far reaching thing that doesn't has nothing to do with the sanitary conditions of the good old U.S. of A. We I think that's totally one. under control. <laughs> right. I think a lot of people felt like that until it's just a few perfect. weeks ago. Yeah. It's perfect. Someone We've been so, blindsided. <laughs> someone someone was playing the uh the uh the C D C tour Trump did like March fifth or sixth or whatever a few weeks ago. And um and that's what he kept saying is that our test is perfect. And and then it almost seems quaint now because he referenced the impeachment again too by saying, like the letter and the transcript, they're all perfect. It was just two weeks ago, but it's but it's just like this whole thing made that impeachment business just seem like really yesterday's news. Like nobody gives a fuck anymore. It's it's just from a from a personal level, it's just been so unfathomable. Because, uh, you know, to get, you know, into my personal stuff, uh, you know, with, with my dad passing, which was mm-hmm. unexpected. Right. Uh, as unexpected as, as it could be with, with all of us having parents who get older and health issues come up. and, and all Right. That. Um, and then this slowly kind of, you know, going from two weeks off school to what we're looking at now. No um, school. And then, and then getting used to uh, staying in. And being like, okay, I can do this. And then getting a call, oh, someone's broken into the, the music store. <laughs> so it's yeah. been a crazy, you know, where you, for you, Bill, in particular, um, you know, and I don't mean to make light of it, but you know, just where you started that whole well, series just, of it, events. It's so, it's that so was two weeks, your like, dad passed two weeks ago, right? It's been, it hasn't even yeah. been 20 days. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so it's like, uh, is, is, is this uh, some weird dream that I can't wake up? I right. Know, what, what, what's going on? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just yeah. uh, just as much as everybody's life has changed, you know, and obviously, you know, again, not to make light of your dad, but the thing is, is, you know, I can think back to just a week ago today and, and didn't seem, you know, uh, they, you know, closed the school for weeks and so on and so forth. But, you know, I, I just, I don't, as much as things have changed in the last 14 days, the last two weeks, you know, I'm, I'm a little concerned about what's going to happen over the next two weeks. And I really hope it just kind of, you know, stays about the same because Stevie, it's I, I would exponentially worse. That's what they keep saying. And, and that's the thing. I mean, you can look at the numbers. I mean, and the, and the, the problem is, is that with nobody being tested with any kind of like consistency or system, none of the numbers mean shit. It doesn't mean shit. Uh, how many cases are confirmed or whatever, so on and so forth. The reported number has gone up exponentially. Sure. Um, but I'd like, I would love to be, I'm not quite as optimistic as you are about just a few weeks from now, people being like, fuck it. Um, but I hope it goes that way. I really do. I, I want to believe that, you know, millions of people have already had this and beaten it without ever going to a hospital or a doctor or anything. And so there's going to be, have, apparently. I'm sure there's no, there's no, there's no doubt that some people have, I'm just hoping that it's enough that, that the, um, the herd immunity nonsense can help kick in or it's just going to keep being this big to do every time something comes along. I just so. want that thousand dollar check. Steve, well, I don't think $1,200 and you're not going to get it till May at the earliest. Ugh. I know. Right. <laughs> it's just like, I'm going to, I'm going to hang up here, boys. My wife's upstairs uh, hollering at me. We're going to watch something about a, um, uh, we're going to watch something about some kind of big cat collectors and some crazy shit that they saw on hey, Facebook. I, I, well, I had an idea for a, a, a next segment, but maybe tomorrow night we can get into that segment. Are you, hey, are you guys, are you guys willing to do this with me? I'm going to figure out how to do the Facebook live thing. But the thing is, is I want to bring some other people in from different industries and stuff. But if you guys will do this, uh, I'll do it whenever you're willing. Like a talk show. Yeah, kind of, but I, it can't run too long. <laughs> But yeah, without a doubt, you guys are welcome to join me every every fucking night around this time. I'm gonna get Troy Turner in, and John Davis from Cleveland said he's in. Um, I I thought I had Wes uh, roped in, but um, tonight he was just like, eh. Oh, so. I talked to Joel today. We could get him. We could get Joel in. Yeah, definitely get Joel in. That would be exciting. Well, the thing is, Joel's in New York still, right? Yeah. Yeah, so things are weird up there. I'd love to get your first-hand account of how weird things are going. They're building a privacy fence in his backyard at triple speed. So it's oh, those are awesome. Time lapse. I love it. I, I used to I used to put those together when I did my hedges every year. Maybe I'll put one together for you guys this year. But anyway, i got to get off. Um, but we'll do this again tomorrow and whenever you guys are willing. All right. All right. Good. Hey, thanks very much. You guys have a good one. Peace.
Uh, Steve? Yes. Hey, let me know next time you're around here because I, f- I totally forgot that I've got your pedal board in, in my car. Uh, okay. I wish I would have thought to give this that to time. you. <laughs> I'm afraid to press this. Le- I'm going to leave the meeting. Hopefully, it'll leave you guys there, but I think it might kill you out when I because I'm the host. Right. I'll- uh-